Greetings and welcome to the latest edition of the Entheogenic Evolution Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Martin, and I'm very happy to have you with me today, joined by guest Oliver Martin, who is the facilitator who served the individuals in the 5-MEO movie, uh, which we talked about last week. And so this week, we get Ollie's perspective on participating in the film and his thoughts about many other things. Uh, We had a great conversation uh, had just last weekend, and I've had a cold all week, so I sound a little bit funny in this episode, and it's taken a lot of editing for me to go back and find all the places that I was clearing my throat or making little illness noises and editing all those out, but I think it's all taken care of, so hopefully that won't be annoying you as you listen to our conversation. Before we get into that, announcements, as always, I would like to extend my thanks to Stephen and Stefan, who have made donations to the Entheogenic Evolution podcast. Uh, For Stefan, he makes a monthly contribution, which you, of course, can do as well. You can set that up via PayPal with the PayPal link at the top right of my personal webpage, martinball.net, or make a one-time donation, such as Stephen. And I also would like to thank Andrew, who made a donation because he took some of my art off of Facebook and used it as his uh, wallpaper on his phone and wanted to make a contribution. So thank you very much, Andrew, and I'm glad you enjoy the artwork. Speaking of artwork, I have recently updated my art webpage of fractalimagination.com with all of my latest pieces if you'd like to check them out. And of course, they are available for gallery quality prints. If anyone is interested, just contact me. And speaking of prints, a way to get a discount on any of my art prints is by joining me over at Patreon. That's right, patreon.com slash Martin W. Ball. I would like to thank Nathan, who has rejoined over at Patreon. He had had to take a month off, but he's back, so great to have you back, Nathan. And also, thank you to Kyle and Doug, who have signed up as new patrons over at my Patreon page. And just a reminder, I do have levels everywhere from $5 a month up to $100 a month. At the $40, $60, and $100 levels, you qualify for a personal Q&A with me over at Patreon where you get to ask a question and then I make a video and I post it exclusively for my Patreon patrons. Also, all of my patrons are uh, eligible to receive a $20 discount on any art prints of mine that they might want. Again, fractalimagination.com if you want to check out my art. And uh, at the $40, $60, and $100 levels, you also receive free art gifts. Maybe even for the $20 level, you get an art gift sent to you at your home after being a member for three months. And uh, let's see, also at the $60 and $100 level per month, you get a complimentary 30-minute consultation with me, which normally a uh, 30-minute consultation runs $65 to $80 sliding scale. And of course, if you just want a consultation, stop by at nondualentheogenicintegration.com and reach out and we can set up a consultation for you to talk about your experiences and any help you might need with integrating those Uh, So once again, if you want to join me over at Patreon, it's a slowly building community. We'd love to have you over there. Uh, Even at the $5 level, it's still great. And uh, that's www.patreon.com slash Martin W. Ball. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get into our interview with Ollie. He's been here on the podcast two times before, so this is his third time here. It's great to have him back. We had a great conversation. Love checking in with him and hope you enjoy our conversation. Again, talking about the new 5MEO movie, which is 5MEOmovie.com. If you want to pre-order it, it will be released in December. And uh, next week, well, there have been some very interesting developments to my own personal story. So I think that that's probably what I'm going to do next week is share a little bit about what's been going on with me. So if you're interested in keeping up to date with uh, developments in my life, that'll be a good episode for you. And if you don't care, well, then just skip next week and uh, come back the week after. We'll have something new. Anyway, hope you're doing well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. Of course, it is your support that makes this podcast and the work that I put into it possible. So I do encourage you to make a contribution. Again, you can use the PayPal link at the top right of my personal webpage martinball.net, or even better, 
come on over to Patreon and become a patron and get exclusive content, exclusive deals. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that uh, people at the $40 level and up also get a complimentary copy of my 2021 Fractal Imagination Art Calendar mailed directly to you. And then you put it on your wall, you know, and you get art. It's cool. It's nice art. I like it. Anyway, here's my conversation with Ollie. Hope you enjoy. So I'm very happy to welcome back onto the Entheogenic Evolution podcast for, I believe this would be round number three at this point um, over the years. I've got Oliver Martin joining me from, once again, all the way across the pond over there in Europe. Where are you right now, Ollie? Uh, I'm at our home here in... Um... Undisclosed European location. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's not that it's not that them are, you know, that those people who I don't want to know that uh, that are watching this program. So, yeah, and I've had you back. I mean, I've had you on the podcast before, um, talking about Silawaska, and um, of course we've spoken about five meo, and we've talking about toads, and we've talking about synthetic, and and all of that. And, uh, you know, as, as my listeners know that I was inspired to reach out to you again, to have you on because you are the facilitator for the five MEO experience for the three gentlemen of, of Frank, Boris and Charles in the forthcoming movie five MEO. And <clears throat> sorry, I, I have a bit of a cold today, so I might have to clear my throat every once in a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. But as I told, uh, the three of them, when I interviewed them, that I was just absolutely delighted when I saw in the film that it was you who would be facilitating. <laughs> and um, like Frank, there's kind of an interesting section with Frank saying, well, you know, I've seen this stuff on YouTube and people shaking rattles and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And he's like, and I didn't want that. And um, then they ended up finding you and working with you in the movie. And, and so this is something that um, I was going to start at a really odd place because uh, nobody, since this is just an audio podcast, um, nobody will know the difference. But uh, you have eyebrows today. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have eyebrows today. My, and my in the, wife, in the film, my you wife have said, eyebrows. What happened there? No, no. Oh, well, um, you know, you have these. I mean, I, I, uh, I had hair once, yeah. So that's yeah. another one. Yeah. So now I don't have hair anymore. And I shaved it this morning because I was like, will he have a video or not? You know, you. This morning I looked like a hairy mess, yeah. But um, my wife said to me, like, won't you start growing eyebrows again, you know? Because I, I started testing it out, how it might look without, you know? I, I've never been, you know, there there has no 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 time for me with cancer or anything for all the people worrying, yeah? yeah. So it's just, I cut it, the eyebrows. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's... Um, we all we always overestimate these things like hair growth, yeah, or size of the belly and stuff. <laughs> so uh, I had this like, okay, why I say goodbye for them for a while, so now now they're back. Oh, well, welcome back, eyebrows. It's it's good to uh, yeah. see you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, see, it, originally I have these eyebrows like um, like bird from Ernie and Bird, like growing like one one line, yeah, like oh, going, the, the growing in the middle. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been so I've been cutting the eyebrows like like you know raising around yeah um, for for ages yeah. So. Uh, yeah, well, I, I I guess it was an accident then, and then I realized okay, I need to cut them fully, and and then I stuck to that for a while, and then my wife said, hey, grow them back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is how it happened. Yeah. Well, it's it's great to see the back, and and yeah, it's just something that <laughs> caught my eye in the film. It's like, oh look, all, all he is doesn't have any eyebrows today. That's interesting. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. So so now that. Um, you had mentioned in our email exchange that you were um, you you were requested not to talk about the film. But now that yeah. we're in the now that yeah. we're in the promotion, the pre-release promotion mm -hmm. stage of the film, I think it's okay for us to talk about the film. And yeah. the Frank and Boris and Charles all just had very good things to say about you and their experience with you. Um, so I'd just like to kind of get your side of the story about them, you know, how, how did they find you and how, 
agree to be part of the film and, and all of that. Just, just interested to hear your take on all of it. Yes, like you said, you know, I was forbidden to talk about it. Um, and it's been one and a half a year ago that we that we shot this doc. And, mm. um, uh, like two months before that or so, March last year or February last year, uh, Frank sent me an email and was like, hi, hello. Um, I have two friends. We would love to have a session. And at that time, you know, I was like, I don't know, three people. Uh, one to three session is a lot of... It's, See, see, I've been reducing all of my work down to the to the core and enhancing then the core to the max, like having a one on one session for five hours mm -hmm. to really to really share time and space with people yeah. and go all in. Like, you know, as you know, I don't smoke the drug. Still, I I go together on that trip, on that journey with the client here, with the person coming and um so it is, you know, with you free people in the same time frame, you need to make space, you know, for each one of them. For you, you gotta have space for the same amount of um, closeness and trust, and and that is, you know, it starts to get a little bit of difficult once it's more than two people. I also learned to separate people during their sessions. So, um, in, in like three years ago, these two peoples, mostly couples, were sitting in one room while, while the one had the session and the other was sitting there. But energy is interfering. If you sit there, worry for your husband, for your spouse, yeah. you know, um, that interferes with the energy in the room. So now, meanwhile, I learned like to separate people. We have a big house, so um, people can be upstairs and stuff, you see. So... Um, yeah, um, f first of all, it was like, okay, for you guys, I will do a one or three. And uh, simultaneously with the first mail, Frank was already asking, hey, we are thinking about uh, doing a documentary and this and that. And and I was like, I don't know if I want to be filmed, you know, doing the experience and this and that. Um, uh, because it's a it's a very fragile thing, you know. And, yeah. Um, Honestly, I don't know if I if I get in trouble here, but surely I can tell you now that the experience itself shown in the in the in the movie is not the actual experience. So the the real five mirror experience we have done on the first day we had a two day meeting, we had a two day um, well session so to speak. The second day was mainly filming and with interviews and stuff. And and the first day was really like a grand session where we had like eight hours where each one of them had their share of, of a full session. And then in, in the center of that, their experience with Five Mio and that we didn't film. Um, so on the second day, we tried to uh, make ends meet, um, having it as real as possible, uh, yet... Um, the the vape being shown is just a tiny fragment of what is a, is a real dose um mm -hmm. and it's not even five it's it's nn so but interestingly as a matter of fact you know that too we talked uh, on rudy's program on this um this four people a talk we had in uh march this year yeah uh, on the medicine day la la um that um flashbacks are something quite often happening with these substance, with 5 mu DMT, uh, typically in, in a meditative or dream state after the session, a few days after the session. But if you have a very intense um, reminder, reminder of that real 5 mu session, uh, you go really deep back into, into the experience. So with that tiny fragment of NN, you know, um, all three of them, or not, uh, weren't smoking all three of them, but the two of them, Frank and um, Boris, they both got back into a flashback experience. Yeah. And so it, so in the end, it was a real experience we filmed. It was just not a real full five meal dose. It was a real uh, flashback uh, experience with a, with a tiny bit amount of, like, a, you see, I mean, in a, in a sense, as you know, it's all in us. So... In the end, five mu is just the 
the transmitter, the um, uh, the catalyst for for the very deep we are all one experience. So um, with the music playing, you know, and yeah, uh, we we couldn't screen the uh, or air the Eno, which I play Brian Eno. Um, discrete music but you know with with all that happened during that um that film session it got them back into a flashback experience so it, in the end it was a real one it was just not the the one yeah uh, they had on the on the first day um so yeah um i forgot actually what we yeah so so they were asking that and i was like okay yeah well let's do it and i saw the the two documentaries of Boris. Boris is the main filmmaker, Boris Young. Mm -hmm. And um, he, his work is amazing. He's uh, doing spirit, spiritual approach uh, movies, so spiritual movies and documentary movies. So um, I was amazed by, by the art and the kind of filmmaking he does. It's, it's amazing. Have, have you actually seen the Five Mio documentary? Have I shown it to you? Yeah, yeah. I, they they yeah. sent me a link to the final edit, and I got to watch the yeah. whole film. And I was so excited yeah. about it. I opened it up right away when they yeah. sent me the link, yeah. and watched the first half one day, and the second half another day. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, well, I yeah, think it good. wasn't until the second half that I saw you, and it's like, oh, there's Ollie! Yeah, Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't have any but eyebrows. He, <laughs> <laughs> but isn't he amazing? You know, um, like how he. <laughs> How he sees these details and how he mixes them together and edits and and how he shoots them and I, I really love his art of filmmaking and um, and that together with the five and that together with the spiritual message behind it is just unbelievable. It's beautiful. And yeah, I think it's a, yeah. a very artfully done film. I really like the editing. I really like the very intimate feel throughout the film. Uh, I think is is very well done, and I like that they're three very different characters. They're three very different individuals, and, yes, and I like I like that the mix and the dynamism between them, and and how they all three have very different takes on what it is that they're doing and what they're experiencing and what they're going through in ways they articulate it or don't articulate it. I think it's all very well done. So it's definitely a movie that I recommend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm very curious how it will develop. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's a small project still, but uh, I wish for for Boris to see the whole thing. For me, was not about me, or um, you know, uh, the whole thing was about you know getting getting Boris up front and and his art out there. And it's it's a, it's a big idea. It's a great idea he had with with this. So and and another thing is I I surely always love to talk about save the toads, you know, uh, because I have these guys living here and I see with all the advertisement going on, there's a lot of uh, like uh, let's call it harvesting of uh, toad secretion, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not really a, really a fan of that knowing how they react to it and how prone they are to infection so um meanwhile it's also there's big money business behind it and what i hear from people all over the world is like um that there's a kind of a cartel going on um in mexico you know sending people in the in the desert harvesting of that secretion selling it on the market you know it's not it's you can even get it on the dark net yeah and um well it's uh i'm always saying like how how spiritual are you if there's another being suffering for that you know i mean i know that you're also speaking for the uh synthesized version of uh, 5meo so um there's no difference so uh so why then bug it out for that yeah that that's definitely become it's become a big part of the whole 5meo scene um and i, I really love the line um see if I can remember it exactly, what you said in the film that, um, I think you said something like anyone who tells you that the, the toad secretion and, and pure five MEO molecule is different as lying or something like that. Um, <clears throat> because the end result is really, it's the same <laughs> yet. There is, there, there's a very strong contingent in the five MEO community or in the more the psychedelic community more broadly of this, this whole idea that somehow 
Toad is magically better or somehow it's superior or it's somehow more spiritual or whatever. And um, I see that as is just a lot of ego, a lot of identification with the toad and with certain ideas about what's better, or what's worse. But, but it's just it doesn't reflect reality. I, I think it is a, a strong role in this or a strong uh, part of this is this romanticism of the shamanic part of it. Yes. As people are, love to romanticize the whole thing and there is an external, it's a, it's an, uh, the mind is thing. It is, you see the whole experience as we know is about a non-dual experience, you know, uh, reaching out to God within, becoming God within and um, the guy having that experience is then making uh, like a toad romance out of it, you know, like uh, me and the toad, you know, me and Mother Ayahuasca, me and the spirits, me and yeah. uh, and God even, yeah, me and God even, and and it's not be about you know, uh, Maharaji from Ramnas, yeah, the guru, he said it's not about uh, visiting Jesus, it's because it's about becoming Jesus. So, um, yeah, uh, it's um, it's. Everything that is too is in, involved in all of this is uh, one step away from the truth again. Yeah, so, um, yeah, just becomes uh, this is what I learned. Yeah. yeah, just just more displacement, more attachment. You know. Yeah. Again. Yes. Yeah. Um, something I want to circle back to is uh, the idea of not actually filming their um, experiences with Five Meo. Was that was that your idea? Was that their idea? Was it a mutual idea? You know, in terms of it was like, my it was my de it was my demand. I'm sorry if I burst the, the big. Uh, I guess I'm getting in trouble with Boris now. <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry. I, I it's just the same thing. Like you know what I said in the in the in the beginning where I'm sitting here. I mean it's, um, you know I trust God. You know so. Um, that's got to be, I got to be true about these things and I can't lie. And so, um, yeah, I would never see, that's really, I, I asked him to like, you know, maybe you can make a disclaimer in the end, like uh, we didn't film a real, we didn't shoot a real five years. So the the people watching this here, they will know, but uh, it's really, I, I would not film a session of any client, even if they want to, uh, they have, because... Um, for the one thing it is, I don't want to have footage like this out there. I think this is irresponsible. It's the one thing. Um, it's a very intimate thing. It's a very, very mm -hmm. intimate thing. It's the one thing. And the other is, who watches the recording afterwards? It's the mind. So what's happening in that space of no spaceness, of becoming everything, um, is nothing the mind can understand. And uh, interestingly, a successful session is where people are totally silent, just breathing. And where I'm having a lot of these because I'm having this strict screening process. Meanwhile, I, I have like out of 100 sessions, I have maybe one person who is not totally in peace with the whole experience because I try to make sure that they are at the right place and at the right time in their life to have this non-dual experience so they give up into the experience rather than being squashed by the experience by the power the sheer power of that drug yeah. um and then <clears throat> so so i think um there's no point in recording silence yeah so um, <laughs> yeah. plus plus what i say it's very very intimate and um i don't think see it's when people write me, um, I've seen everything on YouTube about it. Yeah, and I say, okay, uh, stop watching anything. You know, come back in a month and then we talk. Um, because now your head is full of other people's thoughts. Yeah, of other people's um, pictures and of other picture uh, of other of of all this stuff. And this is about letting go of all the stuff. So how can you, with this shitload of stuff now, go into an experience releasing all the stuff? It's it's not you see it's not beneficial. So um, so yeah, um, the less the less you know, the more you will get out of it. Um, yeah, it, and, um, it's interesting. It's almost like 
the 5MEO experience has become its own YouTube genre. <laughs> yes, it's like in those days with Savia, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, seeing all the seeing all the censorship happening on YouTube these days on on certain topics, <laughs> so uh, like I I don't name them, but you know a lot of censoring is happening there. Five Mio is still up there, you see. So it's it's interesting that they that they don't ban these stuff. Yeah, and uh, of Salvia, there was happen in the in the days where yeah. they, people were jumping the windows and stuff on Salvia. You know, they were banning stuff too. So. Yeah, I mean it's it's dangerous if you ask me because you know uh, the drug it's not the fault of the drug yeah it's it's the, the it's the, I mean there are no faults in life uh, no fault in life yeah it's all meant to happen still you know it it's not the drug who is to blame it's the irresponsibility of people who a promote this in in such a way. And, and be who uh, people who are just follow someone else instead of their hearts. Yeah, um, if you follow your gut feeling, your intuition, your your heart, um, there's no way something can go wrong. I mean, it's um, your heart knows. It's it's just and and it's so interesting that. Uh, Many people are in these days uh, in the in the opening, which we didn't uh, recall. I said, you know, at the moment worldwide, with what is happening at the moment, yeah, that pandemic. I think uh, we have a shift of consciousness happening. Many people start to ask the question: Is that everything? Am I really needing all the stuff? Or is it more about going out, being in the sun, you know, start gardening, like I said, yeah. you know, start, start making your own bread um, with sourdough <laughs> and, and like, you know, become self-sustainable again and um, start being human again. And, and always remember um, uh, that it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful gift to be alive. It's a beautiful gift to be human with all that is included, you know. Um, I mean, you know, people write me like, ah, oh, wow, you're so peaceful. Yeah, fuck that. You know, I'm human. <laughs> yes, I'm so peaceful all the time. Never. You know, I'm having my stuff. You know, there's rarely someone coming at the moment. So there's, I have like one client a month at the moment because traveling is not happening anymore. No planes, no nothing. Yeah. So I had like 80% international clients. So where are they? They can't get here anymore. So um, I, I write a lot of emails uh, as answers. And uh, uh, like, you know, it's so interesting that uh, that many people just need someone to listen to them. Yes. And to really hear them and to hear not the words, but the space within. And then, um, and then just, you know, mirror and reflect where where they are stuck in thinking about certain things in their life because uh, you know all problems are generated by the mind uh fighting what is so um yeah it's as simple as that <laughs> and if there's and then, and really you know when people wake up it's all about gratitude like they realize hey man uh, look, uh, 10 years ago, it's like really, uh, people are like, I want to be in the future. I want to be something. I want to be healed. I want to be better. I want to let go of this. I want to purge that. I want to be more this or that. And and then if you just ask the, the tiny question of, but haven't you been better than 10 years ago? Haven't you been developing the past five years? Ah, yes, you know. And then there comes this gratitude for, wow, how big the ride I am on, you know. I, I'm 30 now, so where's the guy I was, I have been with 20, so I developed so much, but I rarely see this because I look constantly ahead where I want to be, and, uh, and, and then, you know, the gratitude starts, and then people realize I'm much better than I think. And, uh, and that really kills it, you know, mm -hmm. that really is like problems, come on, you know, I got to manage that, I manage this, so I manage that, and nothing can stop me kind of thing, you know, so, 
and and that all all is all you know there's not necessary a psychedelic experience needed for that it's just someone who listens to where they are yeah and um i mean i'm, I'm still doing screening even though people can't come it's kind of like we agree when the time comes that traveling is possible again uh you can come then we have already done the the screening yeah um, well i'd like to talk more about the screening but um one thing that you mentioned earlier that i definitely want to talk a little bit more about is this idea of um working individually with people and also separating people out and just one thing that i would throw in there and then get um more of your thoughts on is that you had mentioned like when somebody comes with say a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or girlfriend or lover in some capacity you said that that you're separating them, not letting them witness that you used to let them be in the same room together. And um, this is a really interesting topic because it's definitely something that I found that uh, you know, back when I was serving with people that I had to really lay out the ground rules of, you know, if you are a witness to the event, you are a witness that you are not to be involved in what's taking place. And this can be really hard for people who are romantic partners where, you know, the person who even friends, y yes, where the person who is having their experience might reach out to that person at some point and maybe from, you know, something that's happening with their ego. And it can be very hard for the people who are a witness to not play into what's, being projected or what's going on there or if somebody's having a difficult time then you know the person who is supposed to be a witness might suddenly feel like oh i have to do something to help this person you know so they might intervene and so it's a really tricky thing and, it, and it's I, I like to hear that you have separated people out because i think also again what a lot of people see on youtube these days is you know a bunch of people standing around And, and watching someone going through this really vulnerable thing. And then also with all the filming, even subconsciously, there could be um, the inspiration to act out or to show for the camera to some degree. And then and, and, and among the participants as well, like who's who's stepping in, who's in charge, who's running the show. So this kind of this keeping this really private and I like. Again, back when I was doing sessions with people, it was usually around three hours with each person, you know, individually. You said five hours. That's that's even longer. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about this and, and how that changes the dynamic for the person who's having their experience when they really get an, an intimate one-on-one -on -one experience rather than some kind of group thing or where everybody's observing or even, again, On YouTube, you see a lot of videos where, where people are out in a public space having their experience. You know, it might be on a beach somewhere and other people are walking by and looking. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah they've, been, they've been doing this here on, uh, on uh, meadows, you know, with, uh, with pathways for just normal people out of the village or something passing by stuff uh, with um, Ayahuasca International. Um, They are called differently. But, you know, I have people who tell me this stuff, you know, and um, sometimes people ask for like, they didn't help me with my processing. Can you help me processing? Or people who come here had already have an experience with other facilitators, something like this. So, um, But yeah, um, like I said, in the beginning, um, I had people together in a room and, and pretty fast I realized that... Um, Even though they say, I won't do anything, I won't interfere, it's energy, everything is energy. And just sitting there thinking is enough, you know, it changes the energy of the room. And since I started to separate people, um, the real magic is happening. And, and interestingly, um, or it's very important that, you, that they shouldn't see them, uh, shouldn't see even each other between, um, in between the sessions. So the one stays in another room. And then I grab the other one from the other room. So um, after the session, they don't see each other. So the, the second person having the session doesn't know how the first session with mm -hmm. the, the husband, friend or so um, developed, you know. And uh, so it's very beautiful that then when they both had the uh, experience, they come together and they go like, uh, 
like never seen before it kind of yeah you know so uh, uh it's very beautiful and um it's I, i'm it's not that i'm very often having uh one on two sessions but if then always in in uh, in that type of thing and when we do the walk in the forest like when when there's a one on two session it's typically six or seven hours then so i leave i leave a i uh, leave a whole bigger time frame for that to have like the two hour walk in the forest that's very important so the whole session starts in the morning at nine and then there's a two hour walk in the forest nearby like four or five kilometers just being there talking and sharing grounding it's mostly like the whole it's it's grounding it's all grounding with nature with true self with peace and and it's so interesting that when people get in the car when we meet they're like nervous just like me you know i'm nervous too I, who's coming there and you know i i only i i don't do skype or telephone or any other way of uh connection of screening i only work with words with written words so it's all going via email I have this uh, set of questions, which are the frame for the um, for the request uh, to the person writing me to write a letter about their life to themselves. That's how I call it. So you coming to me, write a letter about your life to yourself and share that with me. And and you have then people going, oh, it's too intimate for me. And then, okay, farewell. Because if that if that tiny bit of just words is too intimate in, intimate for you, how how dare you you are seeking an intimate experience, the kind of a I is dying, you know, of the the me is dying, um, that is that is more naked than naked can ever be, and um, it, there's no intimacy involved, you know. Intimacy is an idea of the mind to separate to keep. You know, to keep separated and and to be secured. I, yeah, it's, it's I am real. I am I am having in. I need my intimacy. You know, so so. Uh, but the people coming here, they are so true to themselves. Like really, I write a story. They write a letter to themselves, and ninety percent of these people, when they achieve that, when they've done this, and I'm talking about like four for um large le uh, large page letters yeah like a lot of lot of stuff to share uh, it's not it doesn't need that much but people go really crazy when they start to write to themselves you know uh and then they realize how good is this uh, how good this is already um how, how much this is already shifting for them like they have never been um going through their life that way We all live for tomorrow, you know. It's a total deep habit of the human mind to not live here now or look back and see how development happened. Like I said earlier, you know, everybody's looking for tomorrow, for the better self, for the final release, for the, you know. So um, when I write this letter, they come out and say, wow, that was very therapeutic. How did you know? <laughs> and I say, well, I never. I just think that I need to get a feeling for you and how you can get a better feeling for a human being if there's no me in between. So um, yet the story is about the me for sure, you know, but um, it's without boundaries. Uh, it's coming from the heart. So These letters are a very, very, very good way to to look into into the the person writing you, to get it get in tune with them, in touch with them, and then I can then then from my belly I decide, uh, will this be safe possible? Like, is this person freaking out, because it, he she is just following the idea I need to be better, um, or I need a I need a heal I need a you know. I need to crush my ego, <laughs> or or is this person at a place where gratitude runs the ball game, where <laughs> the Martin Paul no, but where gratitude <laughs> runs the life, runs life, you know, where obedience to life is is a tune, yeah, like I trust life, trust maybe not obedience but trust in life is the tune, and is there a life um, being lived, they then let go of. A 20-year-old, you know, 
that has he she has so much life ahead why not live life first be, before they get obsessed with death because you know when the mind dies it's death it's a real death P people say it's a near death experience i wouldn't say it's near death it's death it's just that death is no business, you know. It's just it's the safest thing can happen. It's the best thing ever, you know. It's um, there's this beautiful quote of uh, Tim Leary um, in the in the beginning of the Five Meo uh, doc. Um, uh, death is, um, yeah, I guess the be most beautiful thing on on earth or something or in life or so. Can't, sorry, I can't remember. It's nice to talk about quotes when you can't remember that. <laughs> but everyone will see that then in December. Yeah, so um, <laughs> it's um, death is death is not a big business. So um, and uh, yeah, to to quote Bill Hicks again, it's just a ride. You know, this is a ride in an amusement park, and and it's it goes up and down. It feels so real, and it's all so fuzzy and everything. But it's just a ride. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. So Frank and Boris and Charles all wrote you these letters then? You, you got one from each of them? Yes. Yes. I demand. Yeah, that's also something, you know, uh, people start like, um, I write I, I write you the story of my, my uh, wife or my husband. Uh, and I said, no. You know, I say no. You know, everyone writes me individually from, from their email account. So it's a, an, an, you know, uh, me and you know you and me thing so it's not uh, there has to be two individual sessions in a one-on-two -on -two session it's a one-on-one -on -one plus one-on-one -on -one session a one-on-two -on -two session so to speak and in that case it was a one-on-one -on -one plus one-on-one -on -one plus one-on-one -on -one session yeah. yes and an ollie frank and ollie boris and an ollie charles session so and 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 so beautiful as life you know all of them were so different mm -hmm. Yeah, they were. They, they all had their beauty, and they were all successful. Like life is always successful, um, but each of them had an individual experience. You will see more. Like people will see more about that in the um, in the documentary when it comes out. Let's not spoil too much. Um, but yeah, um, they were all having very beautiful experience, and um, I mean, I don't know what, what they told you about it. Yeah, I just don't want to be the guy who, <laughs> <laughs> who talks too much about the documentary and then no one buys it and I'm the ass. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when I, when I had them on, we actually, we talked for like two hours straight. And even even there, it felt like we could have gone on for like two or three more hours, just keep yeah. talking. So, you know, we, we had so, a great so, conversation. Yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. lot of fun. So so they will have the content there i i can say they were all three were unique like we all are unique so how how you know how could it be any different but three individual sessions yeah. and and all of them were like boris had the most intense one one might say because he was the one who was really uh in like you know in inhaled dosage was mainly uh roughly between uh, 13, 14 milligrams for all three mm -hmm. of them. I guess, I guess it was like all three the same. Um, but Boris really inhaled, was gone, just breathing, no nothing, no muscle, no 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 word, no nothing, and came back and was totally blown away. And and then in the processing over the course of the year following that, he went in to a lot of stuff coming up for him. That's how much I know. And and Charles had had an experience where he really uh, he needed presence at a time. And and Frankie too, but with Frankie it was more like he he was going the um, uh, like beautifully crazy uh, thing, you know, like not 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 screaming and kicking and stuff, but he was really agitatively, beautifully uh um, um like his love was kind of like he was overwhelmingly um uh, <laughs> going out of himself kind of yeah so um he was talking a lot and um and yeah but all of them they were all happy about what they've got and um yeah, yeah. Was, uh, and, and that's one of the very powerful. Yeah, that's one of the important significances I think of having them all go separately 
you know, like again, when I, back when I was serving and honestly, most of the people that I worked with, um, they didn't bring anybody with them. Um, and sometimes they did. And that person was planning to go on a later day. But the, what I always would tell everyone is, is, so you're witnessing somebody else, but don't think that your experience is going to look like theirs. And it's also really important not to compare your experience to theirs. And and that's something that comes up a lot with people, especially with people who have seen a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like that is like, well, well, why didn't my experience look like that? You know, and I think you and I can both agree it's because each of us are unique individuals. Each of us has has a unique story that we're bringing to the experience. And we all have unique things that we need to go through in that experience. So, of course, yours doesn't look like somebody else's. But if you have a context where people can immediately compare, you're like, oh, well, that person was screaming and yelling, that person was blissful, and then I was throwing up. So what was wrong with me? You know, that that people automatically start comparing each other. And so I do like that that model of even that you don't even let them have contact with each other between the sessions and then kind of leave it for, for at the end that it really allows for the person to really have their own individual experience, which is, again, as we've talked about, is incredibly intimate, is very vulnerable. You know, that, that that's really something that comes out of the 5MEO experience, that um, people who really allow themselves to go with it, that it is a vulnerable space. You know, and it's not necessarily something that everybody should be filming or posting. And, you know... Yeah, indeed. Yeah. It's... Um... Um, the thing is, you know, the five meter DMT experience is as powerful as, as a full high dose mushroom experience of seven hours yet condensed to 10 minutes or 50, yeah. maybe, maybe 30 if you take the full, you know, uh, from, from uh, back to zero thing. Yeah. But it's really, you know, it all happens. What, what the core of a, of a, uh, a full like 100 milligram or 80 milligram of uh, psilocybin experience would look like. Um, and you got to make sure, you know, that you make up for the uh, six and a half hour missing. And um, see, when you have this, uh, this seven hour thing, you have a lot of time to slowly let go into yeah. it, to be there for a long time. And it's very beneficial to be there longer than 10 minutes. However, you know, um, I'm not saying this is better, this is uh, uh, worse or so. It's just I'm saying if you have a 10, 15 minute experience going so beyond of beyond, beyond where beyond is, you know, um, then you, you got to make up for the surrounding of that. And this is why I'm having five hours instead of a half an hour or, or 50 minutes or something, uh, which you can see with other people doing this. And um the, like I said, this grounding thing, the two hours in the in the forest, and then there's no rush. You know, we come back here, and then it's settling down in the, in the living room, and, and having the um, in the winter time, having the the fireplace running, settling down, feeling at home. You know, you know, uh, just landing, landing uh, at the site where you then later lift off and land again. So, and then following. Um, the experience it is very important to ground back again with the body to fully integrate and and what's better than then then uh, also you become hungry uh, most yeah, people yeah. Become after psychedelic experience yeah, yeah. they're so, ready to eat so what's better than what's better than to have a warm delicious healthy lunch which i prepare uh like with green and wolf salad and stuff and and warm food to reintegrate with the body and then also have a time uh, to talk about what happened, to prepare people for the possible flashback they might have. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, of all people flashbacking, and it's really happened often, um, if you have a successful session, I have to say, um, that you tune in back and people, you know, they're not listening. You know, I say, hey, for two, three days, don't meditate. Don't listen too much to Brian Eno. Uh, don't do any other drugs. You know, you will end up back in a full release. Yeah. So still, even if they listen to me in the fourth night, in the third, fourth, fifth night uh, during sleep, there comes the flashback. Uh, in 
more often than I than I would have thought uh, in the early days when we were doing this on the weekends with lower dosages. But if you have a full dose and a full release, then it very often happens that there is flashbacks happening. And I'm not saying, you know, there's dangerous flashbacks, like I'm driving a car and suddenly I'm flashing. No, it's really in these moments of, you know, how you call this alpha state and dreaming or waking up state. Yeah, these these like very, very subtle stages of a release of physical form happening. Then the 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 brain releases 5-MeO on top of this. It's an endogenous drug. So it's all there's not there's no like people were saying like LSD is, is left in the brain then reacts again and flashbacks, but it's not that. Yeah. It's, it's 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 a body a bodily generated like a full uh, your it's it's full your own uh, 5-MeO again, you know, so the, the brain releases it. And um, yeah, and if and, and, and from the people who have that, um, very rarely I have a, I have to have um, phone calls then, like Skype calls, um, to talk about it. In most cases, because people are prepared, they just write me, hey, I had a flashback and it, this and that turned out to be, and they, they know how to make benefit mm -hmm. of it. And that's so beautiful because then you get, then it truly is a second free r ride yeah, yeah. <laughs> because because in the end you know they are so it's so funny you know people write me oh i want to have this five mirror experience then they have the five mirror experience then they get a flashback and suddenly it's a problem yeah. you know? <laughs> and instead of just saying hey free trip you know <laughs> um, but yeah uh, many many people who um, when they are prepared can see it as a as a free um yeah as a as a free um, way to process it. It's, it's a processing mechanism yes. for the brain, I guess. Yeah, and it's interesting, kind of like you mentioned, that it does, these react reactivations do tend to show up when people actually have the time and space to be with it. Like you're saying, it it doesn't happen when people are driving their car down the road. It's, yeah, it's it's when you're relaxing or meditating or when you're asleep and then it happens and it only becomes problematic when people fight with it. But, you know, my advice has always been to people is, oh, we'll just treat it like you're in a session. That's all. And then... Yeah. And I mean, it's just to have that clear too, yeah, from my experience or from, from experiences of my clients, you know, we're talking about a 10, 20% of the real deal, yeah? No one, no one is having a, a real full release where nothing is possible anymore. They have a 10, 20 percent uh, flashback thing. And I'm not saying it can't be uh, scary if they start to fear it. Yeah. Um, but it is, in a sense, steerable and it's faster gone um, than the real deal. So, um, yeah, it's like I said, I, it, it strongly feels like a reprocessing, like a processing through reliving it kind of thing. So, uh, so it's a gift. Yeah, it's it's definitely a gift. And um, seeing how short this experience is, it seems to be like a, a huge part of the whole thing um, to to process it. Yeah, yeah. And um, kind of bring it back into consciousness in a little bit more of a controlled environment, a little bit more of a controlled situation where then those energies open up again and people get to re-experience that and then maybe release something new that didn't get released the first time around. And, and for me, that's really the key is just treat it as though you're in a session, you know, so have the same sense of trust, have the same sense of relaxing, letting go, know that you're not in control and just let it happen. And it's when people fight with it that then, it, you know, I tell them that, well, if you don't let it in, then it's just going to keep, keep coming, knocking back on your door, you know, that, that once you start an energetic process, you can't stop it. So you might as well as go with it. Well, like with all things, you know, we all have our businesses yeah. to deal with uh, coming from life. And, you know, we don't need to name it. But, you know, uh, from, from my brain, it's always been like I'm, I'm well if I'm having drugs, you know. So uh, I started to quit coffee. Um, however, surely I replaced it with something better. <laughs> now it's matcha tea, you know. But matcha tea is super delicious. 
uh, oh well delicious okay but it's super nutritional yeah it's no it's honestly it's very good there's a lot of antioxidant stuff in it and it's it's uh um i i mean i i swallow the whole uh powder yeah and and tiny amount like one and a half a gram and you have like three hours of very clear conscious energy not like the coffee rush you know the coffee rush is everybody knows caffeine i guess and um and matcha tea is so amazing it um I'm I'm so blessed and and my and my gut you know my my intestines say hey Oli good job you know <laughs> uh, thank you very much after all these years finally you got it you know so um, I I also been doing kratom you know so I can I I uh, could reduce that to the absolute minimum and don't do it over the day uh, anymore because that matcha tea. Is a very very cool thing. I never heard, you know. I, it it just suddenly it crossed my path, and it and it uh, I had a resonance to it, and I thought, why not? Yeah. So another thing I've been starting is um, I I've been uh, I've been having sleep issues. Um, I mean, you know, uh, very well. What I'm talking about. So in my case, it's more like I can sleep, but I wake up like four times a night. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the bladder says, "Hey, guy, gotta need to go," yeah. you know. So I'm, I'm 46 almost, and uh, I guess it's too much ketamine all over my life or something that my bladder is not that proper anymore. I, it's it's more tingling that than be than before. I, I can't, I don't have an idea. I, I don't need to put an idea to it, you know. It's I also know that in those days with doing amphetamines, I know that also amphetamines are not good for bladder. Uh, for bladder skin or something inner skin and uh, so yeah I need to go to the toilet so I, I walk over those few meters and then uh, go back in bed and I can't sleep again and and I found that um, if I really having issues there's this uh, I, I would never take any other stuff than natural stuff so um, if I'm really having sleep, sleep issues which is rarely though um, then I having this um, the sleep hormone, um, hmm? melatonin, um, melatonin. Yes. Yeah. It's not, you can't get it in undisclosed European location, but you can, uh, internationally you can buy it. So, um, that I use, but, but really rarely like two, two, three times a month. But what I found what's really beautiful and psychedelic as well is, uh, I have this African dream herb now. It's, it's, it's not the typical African dream herbs. There are many. It's, uh, it's a one, I should have brought it and, and say the, the, uh, the name. It's a uh, whitish root. Yeah. It's, um, uh, I have a lovely vendor in, in the Netherlands where I buy, um, capsules and bags and stuff and everything in Kratom and, uh, so they, I saw it there and it resonated with me and I thought, hey, I, I buy this, it's just 50 grams and I can try it out. And you only take 400 milligrams before you go to sleep. And it's so beautiful because it, it uh, enhances your sleep um, quality. Yeah. And it gives you, uh, you tend to have more lucid dreaming. Mm. So I never, I've never been, I've been dreaming a lot in those years. Like I always say, it's a free NN, you know, <laughs> we all go, let's die tonight again, you know, let's die because that's pe people who have, um, uh, like afraid to, to sleep and stuff like, you know, when they had terrible experiences in their life, it's, it's mostly because subconsciously they know I'm going to die. I'm going to die. You know, uh, sleeping is like dying every night. And, and then you have these free and end, uh, free and end DMT rides every night. So, but with, with this dream herb is even more, you know, it's, um, um, it's in a very beautiful sense. I can, it's, it's a white root. Yeah. It's a very strange white root. It's a, it's a shrub. And they harvest the white root from it. Um, yeah, well, I can look it up and send you then. But uh, it's if you if you put it in a Dr. Go uh, uh, African Dream Herb white root, you will find it. I'm I'm pretty sure people will find it. A very interesting plant and not, not much researched. And I can say so far, it's very very beneficial thing. And I'm very thankful, you know, that these things come across me. You know, also all the herbs I'm uh, I'm taking for my health. You know, there's a plant from Thailand, Mordania, which I always I love to do these advertisements for mm -hmm. plants. Yeah. So and I'm taking Jiao Gulan. It's a it's a Chinese herb of immortality. 
uh, very amazing stuff and you know see the the Thai plant you can't grow yourself you can grow yourself Murudanya it's called and even Giagulani can grow yourself and and I take ginger and cook curcuma um, I, I guess it's called yeah ne uh, tamarind or something it's called in, in English right um, this this reddish uh, ginger like uh, root and um, what else uh, well, as yeah, and the algae yeah, here, Chlo chlorella and spirulina, mm -hmm. I take these things, you know, because you know, I I know that um, I've I, I haven't been looking for my body all those years, so it's nice to give back, you know, to say, hey, hey, guy, you're running around here forty six years for me, so I gotta take care for you and more responsible, you know, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry for going off topic here, but it's really. <laughs> you said we can talk about everything. So, yeah, of course, yeah. Did I mention the Did I mention the sourdough bread? <laughs> it's man, that's so that's so healthy. And and like I said, you know, uh, also sprouts here, uh, microgreens. Guys, grow your own microgreens. They're so cool. There's there's they're, they're bursting of energy. They're bursting of vitamins. They're bursting of life. It's. You know, it's unbelievable um, what nature provides us. If we see it, if we look at it. Growing your own vegetables in the garden is a whole process. is a It's not about you know uh, free food. It's it's about having this whole process of using your physical energy, love, yeah, and putting that into. You know, going into symbiosis, that's how I grow mushrooms, you know, putting it in a symbiosis with another being and then growing love from it and then getting this love back and going into, you know, it's get goose skin talking about it. It's really, really something very powerful, very beautiful. And for myself, I can say thank you, Corona. Yeah. Thank you, COVID-19. Thank you. Illuminati or whoever is behind it or not, yeah. Thank you for that because that is what's happening. I personally and many people I see go back to living life as a human being, start to see nature as the source and not Google and not Apple and not the television or anything, but life, but nature, but you know. So, um, yeah. And, um, yeah. So it kind of, kind of sounds like yes. you <laughs> take your food growing the same way that you approach um, serving 5-MEO to people. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's You got to be, you know, if there's no heart, yeah, there's no love. And you got to be with it fully or leave it. That's how I live my life, always been. And, and you know, I have this little guy up here and he has a lot of pain and he's still going on like, how can you live in such a world? And, oh, and people are suffering so much and it will get worse, you know, all the money spent and, oh, come on, all the, the companies dying and everything. But, you know, that's just him. That's just, uh, you know, the mind can't see little. Ollie can't see the whole world behind it. He's, he's doomed to live in this box of like it, not like it. Mm -hmm. Green, yellow, blue, you know, that's it. The And what what else? What is the yellow? Red, yeah? Mm -hmm. So he, he only has, the world for him is the spectrum of visible light. That's it. There's nothing beyond that and, and that's so much beyond. There's everything beyond. It's like David Icke says, we are our consciousness having an experience called human. We are infinite consciousness, yes, and we are, you know, and it's, um, life is so beautiful, it's such a gift, and everyone listening out there, you know, you can do it, you know, again, like Bill Hicks says, you can start now choosing between fear or love. If you choose fear, it only goes more of what you already have. If you start to choose love, it all opens up. And uh, I think we are at a verge of a big, huge change. It's shifting consciousness is happening, really. And um, it's, you know, um, it's the dark night of the soul. You know that term. Yeah. Right? It's what we are having now. It's what we're having now. It can't get any worse. And then boom, it all opens up. It's you corner yourself out 
And then you turn around and see the whole world behind you. And there's it, you know, and then now it's starting. And yeah. yeah. So yeah. <laughs> speaking of things changing, um, it was probably, I don't know exactly when I first had you on the podcast, but I'm just going to say is probably maybe nine, 10 years ago now, originally. Uh, what? Uh, 2014, I guess. Really? Was it that? So it's not, yeah, it's not that much. It's about, but, but, okay, but, but that, that, that might have been the second years. time I had you on, though. Doesn't. Yeah, but but I started 2013 in July with the first weekend. Okay. So okay. Okay. I've, so I've been doing this for right. in the eight years. Right, so in the eighth year. So yeah. then maybe six, maybe six or seven years ago, you yeah. know, time it blends together, and and yeah. I had my, my hard drive crashed, and I lost my entire archive of um, episodes from the podcast, so I can't go back. Jeez. I can't go back and check and. Uh, Fine, but it's been a while since I originally had you on, and I'm just curious about um, any perceptions or thoughts that you have about Five um, Meo in Europe at this point. So, and and I'll preface that, or actually, this is not a preface; this is coming afterwards. So, that this is the afterwards to that question. Is you know, people ask me all the time, "Where can I go to experience Five Meo?" And especially people contact me in Europe, and they're like, "Where?" can I go? And I said, well, I know Ollie, you know, I, I don't know anybody else, but, um, I'm just curious, have you seen changes in five MEO circles, uh, in Europe and also, um, any impressions about how things have changed in psychedelic culture in general in Europe over this time period? Um, See, the, the problem with this question is that I'm that solo guy. Yeah, you know? I'm yeah. typically I'm typically uh, not following the shamanic stuff and I'm typically not following the psychonaut society stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm um, and I, I don't want to have you see, I, I only trust uh, my gut feeling, you know, so myself, so to speak. So that's why I don't cooperate with people. Um, I had a, a client, she does, um, she came here for five and she, she does uh, mushroom sessions in Switzerland. So uh, in a different, in a different way than, than I do. And so some people I send to her because I know her and I know from a friend of mine who was last weekend near Cologne in a, a at a five meal session with a guy from Mexico, mm -hmm. not the guys we yeah. know, but a shaman self called shaman because you know whatever so um it's kind of like secretly they do five meal sessions secretly they do ayahuasca sessions uh even germany and it's you know i guess it's a lot of stuff of this stuff is you know i'm no social media guy i have been in the beginning but i've quit that and for good you know because i go crazy i i went crazy with like what other people think about me. Yeah. You know, it's one of the big, the biggest, deepest addictions we humans have. What do they think about me? And uh, so, so when I realized I don't give a shit, um, I started to realize then don't tease myself. See, it's, um, it's kind of like if you're, if you're an alcoholic, you don't work in a liquor store, right? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, do, why, why hurt yourself? Yeah. So, um, so I went out of all social media, but I know from people talking with me, that on social media on Facebook is a lot of these uh, you know you got to search for it stuff happening then there was this iboga farm uh, thing in, in the Netherlands but they got busted because the person died on one of their sessions they had these warrior retreats mm. I don't want to bash about them but see uh, if you do seven or six psychedelics in two days where's the responsibility there yeah <laughs> so uh, for one of them, people visiting there after two, three years doing this or four years or so, uh, one person died. And, and see, I, I've always been this guy. Um, there shouldn't be collateral damage when it comes to human beings. So, um, I mean, there shouldn't have, shouldn't be collateral damage to any being, but you know, um, you can't do sessions and just go along with, well, I served 3,000 people if four die, who heck, who the heck, you know, it's a good outcome. Yeah, it's not, I, I don't think so. And 
So yes, I've always been trying to keep profile low and doing quality over quantity. Yeah. Like I do for say, I, in the past, yeah, not these days, yeah. But in the past, I've been maximum like five, four, four or five sessions a month, you know, because this is it's really I never been doing this for the money or so. It was always you know to have a quality involved to give further it's a passion it's how how passionate i grow mushrooms it's the passion i do these sessions and um so uh i always been it, doing it differently but i know that there has been a, a, a rising in people offering combo sessions offering five meal sessions offering ayahuasca sessions even mushroom sessions yeah where all of them are either working with sclerotia uh in the netherlands or um also Germany, I guess, or Cubensis mushrooms. So very weak species um, where you need to take a lot. And it's, you see, as you know, I believe that psychedelics are meant for that non-dual thing and not for the uh, me having an experience yeah. thing, uh, like nice visions, machine elves or whatever. So um, it's, yeah, I mean, you can talk hours, you know, Terence, yeah, you can talk hours mm -hmm. yeah, about how beautiful the machine elves and me and what secrets they had for me and all of this. But five Mio is bad shit. Mm -hmm. I guess that was that was his quote. And then later we learned that Dennis shared uh, that the the tumor in his brain had the shape of a mushroom after he quitted taking mushrooms where he had one of the most terrible, like the terrible experience of his life and always been in love with the mushroom. And then he stopped because of this one experience where I guess it started to happen, you know, so it's, but you know, that's typical me. I, I really don't want to d d uh, bash around Terence, you know, without Terence, I would never stop growing mushrooms. It all started for me with the Austin Uric growing book. So um, thank you, you know, rest in peace. And um, thank you, definitely. Thank you, Terence. But we had it before with YouTube, with Leo Gura and all these guys, you know, doing psychedelics and making a, uh, making a big, um, I would say, um, like, you know, overlooking the tool for its purpose thing, you know, it's, it's um uh buddha said like you if you have a thorn in your you know thumb you know you need to dig it out with another thorn right but then you have to throw away both thorns otherwise you get attached to the second one digging the other one out so um for many people psychedelics become that thorn where they dig out other thorns and then they now stick to that thorn so um so yeah um, I think uh, this is mostly why uh, I'm not really connected with people because I, I still see that uh, that they do it a different way. I'm not saying uh, I'm better or anything. I'm just saying I'm doing it differently and I have my my quality approach in a certain way. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing you're doing your thing. You're doing it your way. Yes. And yeah. 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 We're all unique beings, you know, so everybody's free to do what they want. I mean, uh, yes, yeah. obviously, you know, God takes care, life takes care, and um, everyone gets what uh, they need to be, uh, to need to have in life. Um, um, so it all will sort itself out. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, yeah. it just, it makes me just think a, a little bit of myself. So I'll talk about myself for just a moment. Um, that... You know, because I'm I'm kind of a, well, a sort of a public figure for Five Meo and and all of that, um, but kind of like yourself. I mean, I I don't personally feel like intimately connected into the psychedelic community or or anything like that. And a lot of times, people approach me kind of with the assumption that oh, I must know everyone, and I, I hang out in all these circles, and I've got my thumb on the pulse of everything that you know. And it's just, well, <laughs> actually, it's, it's just me and. It's mostly me sitting in my computer, you know, either talking to individuals or doing interviews or anything like that. But, you know, I, I don't really feel, you know, tapped into the scene or, or anything so much, you know. So like you, I mean, I'm just a guy doing my thing, you know. Yeah. And man, you, you really have writing skills. Uh, and 
I, I, not not only the um, the psychedelic books, but the psychedelic art, let's say, like the, the, liter the literature, like the, the stories. And I really love your music and art. And um, I'm not I'm not gifted in that way, but uh, I really um, I um, I say admire you for that. Yeah, really, well, thanks. Um, yeah. Thanks. Uh, honestly, and 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 that's uh, that's this. I guess where we are, you're right. Where we are very similar because we follow follow our way. I mean, yeah. you had your share of this of of saying your stake about Terence. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> that was a shitstorm, man. But you know, it's okay. And again, you know, I I love Terence. It's all okay. And I would like, you know, he would give me, and I would give him like a big effing hug, and it would be all cool. You know, still we are two individual, two pictures, two images of God, playing out in a different way. You know, so it's okay. Yeah. It's all okay. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> well, I, I know it's getting a little late on your end, so I, I want to let you oh, go I'm so cool. you can, you know, have your night. But um, anything you want to share to wrap us up today? Yeah, well, I, I already uh, yeah, we we talked about it a little before. So, uh, so my biggest thing was to give people out there a huge hug and just say, "Hey, uh, it's all okay. It's just a ride. Have have a just click duck duck go. It's it's a ride, Bill Hicks. You know, and have your one and a half a minute of total peace, and like you know, make your choice between fear or love." And be sure we are in a shift of consciousness. It's a big shift of consciousness happening. And all the, you name it, yeah, happening, it doesn't matter. It's just a ride. Just a ride. In, in an amusement park. And it's going up and down and on and about. And um, I've, I personally found for myself um, that it's that's very good, you know, to um, go out and and not stay too much inside and uh, yeah do gardening or go back to to doing uh, I'm a typical guy who thinks a lot um, and it's so funny because <laughs> I get these letters well I'm a thinker oh you tell me <laughs> oh everybody's a thinker it's kind of like every nine out of ten people write well I'm thinking too much you know yeah, well, you know, it's okay. It's a habit, yeah. but you can you can break it by just letting it the way it is. You know, you think more about the thinking than you wouldn't think. You know, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just start doing. You know, just live life. You know, and and I mean, it's the best trip you're on already. So so who can improve what? Uh, so what? Yeah. <laughs> just just go out. Be human. Be human. Be human. Have it. <laughs> it's your gift yeah. specifically designed the way it is the best for yourself so a, a, a friend of mine a lady friend um, Teresa Th Teresa she she had like like uh, um, how you say um, a lot of people coming out of this uh, therapeutic uh, area yeah and everyone was going like you need to dig up your corpses in the in the cellar you know you got to have your skeletons out of the closet you got to take care of your past I mean, she was abused you know and stuff and you got to take care for that and then she's a super lovely lady and she's so funny and so happy and so just here but once you know she's with these people telling her what kind of shit she still has somewhere in her you know she she starts <laughs> She starts to worry and think mm -hmm, and goes mm -hmm. back and forth and back and forth. And she was like, Ollie, what do you say about that? And I said, hey, you're amazing. Can't you see that? You know, just don't give a shit what anybody else is saying. What do they know? Are they Theresa or not? So what? You know, you have a lovely girl, daughter, and have fun. Look at her. She's not worrying about a shit, you know, about a thing. She just enjoys life. And boom you know it, it opened her totally up and uh it's 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 so funny because all these people were from his ex from her ex-husband who is 25 years older than she and these old fuckers sorry <laughs> these old people you know they've been constantly telling this young girl 30 or something you know uh 
what is all wrong with her, you know, <laughs> as if they have, you know, managed it, uh, you know, having this, this serious face, you know, like, gotta take him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, you know, uh, following Papaji, it's just, you know, laugh it off, laugh it off, laugh it off. It's so, you know, why serious? Only serious people think, you know, so, um, okay, that was more than one word. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, very good, Ollie. Yeah. So, Silawaska dot com is are you still available there? Uh, still. Yeah. 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 Still. Yes. Very good. Um, yeah, and and uh, one day we will all travel again, one way or the other, and then yeah. uh, I would love to have everyone here. I mean, I can see that people if they go to quarant quarantine or it's called yeah, yeah. Um, two weeks or so, it it just you know it 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 would mess with the whole experience if you come here and then go two weeks in quarantine and stuff. You know, it's just ridiculous. So they even cut borders to to all the surrounding countries again and. It's not yet done, you know, but there will be lights in spring latest. Yes. But I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that around Xmas something, is, something big is going to happen. My God says. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, and well, people really trust the plan. Yeah. Trust God's plan. It's um, life is all there. And it, however, it's just a ride. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you for your time today, Ollie. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for for uh, how you say for hitting me up again. And boy, I'm so curious for your talk with the free boys tomorrow. So curious. I'm super curious how the whole thing will, uh, um, yeah, will turn out to be. And I, I would be so happy for Boris if he gets the kudos he deserves as a filmmaker. Yeah. And yeah, um, and it's it's good. It's something huge, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, really, thank you so much, man, yeah. well, with everything, you know, and yeah. yeah, well, it's great to see you again, Ollie. Thanks for being a part of the project. Thanks for being on the show to talk about it and share your life and perspective. And I'm sure we'll do it again somewhere down the road. Yeah, yeah. we're all still here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> all right, Ollie, take care.